this one. You guys are used to used, uh, used to doing these or problems like these. It says evaluate the following function for the following values of x. So here's our function. It's called the f function. Actually, you'll see that mostly. Uh, and there's there's what you're going to do with the x when you plug it in. And x can equal negative two or x can equal t minus one. So let's see what that looks like. Let's plug in the negative two first because he looks friendly. Um, we have f of negative 2, because that's what we're plugging in. When we plug a negative 2 into our f function, what do we get? We have 4 times negative 2 squared minus negative 2. I like putting parentheses everywhere where I plug something in, because it gets rid of mistakes, common little mistakes that happen all the time. Now, what do I do first in order to simplify this? You square it. So this squared, negative 2 squared is 4. Now I have 4 times 4, which is 16. Uh, I add the opposite here, and it'll be plus 2. And so my result is 18. F of negative 2 is 18. All right, let's do another one. This time we'll use green. F of t minus 1. Oh, snap. We're plugging in something different. Oh, that's kind of confusing, right, when you first see it? So let's just leave it blank. Let's put parentheses every time you see an x. Uh, when we're writing our function here. So uh, 4 times parentheses squared minus parentheses. Now, what is x equal now? Well, x equals t minus 1. What? It equals a, another variable? Yeah. t minus 1 is what I'm plugging in. t minus 1 and then t minus 1. Okay, so what do you do first? Squared. squared. Same thing as before. So we're going to have 4 times t squared minus 2t uh, uh, plus 1. And then this guy right here is like adding a negative 1 times that. So we're going to add negative t plus 1 because one, negative 1 times positive t is negative t. Negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give you the positive 1. Uh, not done. Got to distribute the 4. So I have 4t squared minus 8t plus 4. Then you have minus t plus 1. All right, combine like terms, the t's. How many, how many negative t's do I have? So I have negative 9 t's plus, and I have a 4 right there and a 1 right there, so that's 5. Uh, f of t minus 1 equals that, and that's your answer. Now, here's your last one. This one's asking you to define the domain. What is the domain? And your question is this. Whenever you see something like this that says, what is the domain? Your question is, what can I plug into that function? So I have three different functions. I have the f function, the g function, and the h function. Look at this f function. What can you plug into this x? Is there anything stopping you from plugging anything you want into there? No, no there's not. Uh, <clears throat> when you look at the other ones, some of you guys are going, what? What's going to stop me? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, well, this one, no. There's nothing that can stop you. So you're going to say all real numbers. That's what your domain is. In interval notation, that would be negative infinity. Ooh. <laughs> negative infinity to positive infinity. Dang, what's up with my infinities? Oh, no. Did I forget how to make them? Okay. <clears throat> Explain what, what part? Like doing the answer. Oh. Um, the question is, what is the domain? Yeah. And so the question is, what can I plug into there? And you can plug anything into there. Well, all real numbers. You plug in any real number, it'll work. Okay. All right, so let's look at this next one. Uh, keep in mind, these are already functions. You already know they're functions. What can I plug into that x? In fact, a better question would be, what can I not plug into the x? What? Shut up. Yeah, one. I cannot plug in one. Why? Because then it would be undefined. So you have to say that you can't plug in one. Um, you can say like this. Uh, in the back of the book, I think they give it in... Uh, inequality notation. So you could say anything less than 1 or anything greater than 1. I like interval notation. So uh, I would write like negative infinity to, to 1, not including the 1. That's why there's a parenthesis. Union with, combined with, uh, 1 to positive infinity. Both of these answers are correct. I just like the interval notation better. Now, in words, you can say something like all real numbers except for 1. 
but that's not uh, you know really mathy there. So let's look at this one, the H one. Now what's going to be the restriction here? Zero. You cannot have a negative inside the square root. That's what you guys were just saying. You cannot have a negative in the square root. Now what do you think it was? Uh, you can't have zero or anything in the Actually, you can't have a zero. What's what's the square root of zero? Because zero squared is zero. That's fine. Uh, what's um what's three times one third? One. One. One minus one is zero. So you can have a zero, right? I can I can have a zero inside. You can't plug zero into this. Oh yeah yeah you're right. You can't plug zero into this. You're right. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I thought you were telling me that you could not have a zero inside of a square root. In Okay, no, right. I, I misunderstood you. So we cannot have a negative number inside here. So what x values can you plug in? So now you can sit and figure it out and like look at a number line or, and stuff like that, or you can do it algebraically, which I kind of like. So x minus 1 has to be positive, right? It has to be 0 or positive. So it can be greater than or equal to 0. That would, be, that would say it's 0 or positive, right? Anything positive. So what... Uh, well, x be? Well, if we add one to both sides, we get 3x is greater than or equal to 1. Then we divide both sides by 3, we get uh, x is greater than or equal to 1 third. And that's your answer. Or you could say 1 third included all the way to positive infinity. Both of those are the same answers.